Hi, and welcome to the Health Begins with Moms show. I am Dorit Pavanov, your host. On this podcast, I will share insights and interviews on health, parenting, and explore the question of what does it take to thrive as women, wives, and mothers. Now, let's get going with today's episode. Hey, and welcome to another episode of the Health Begins with Mom podcast. This is Dorit Palvanov, your host. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a registered holistic nutritionist, and I work with families and moms and help them to figure out the health situation and the food situation in their homes. By the way, a quick reminder that the show notes from today's episode can be found over at my website, healthbeginswithmom.com forward slash EP-35. And you're also welcome to join the conversation with today's guest and myself over at my closed Facebook group called Busy Moms Get Healthy. So over to today's topic. Today we're talking about how to make only one meal that the entire family will will eat. So one of the biggest challenges moms complain to me about is creating is catering to everyone's dietary needs or preferences in the family. I hear questions like, how do I not make more than one meal for my family? How do I make my kid eat what we eat? How do I get my picky eater to try new foods? And many other questions. I get it, believe me. I also have a picky eater at home. And it is definitely a challenge to not only make a healthy meal, but actually get this food in her mouth without coercion, threatening, or punishment. I believe that feeding as well as parenting has got to be done in a respectful manner with understanding, compassion, grace, and patience. I hear many moms complain that they are not enjoying to be in the kitchen, that they hate cooking. A lot of it is not really because they hate cooking, but actually because they've never learned to cook, which is my be- which in my belief is one of the most important skills to learn ourselves and teach our children. Let's start by saying that if you're not enjoying cooking in general or that you are dreading spending time in the kitchen, this activity would seem both laborsome and a lot of hard and not fun work. No judgment here. I admit that I don't personally love cooking. I do it because I choose to, because my family's health is important to me. And you know that I'm a huge proponent proponent of sustainable living, and this is true with regards to eating and feeding as well. If you find yourself repeatedly struggling and dreading mealtime, then you have to ask yourself why. What about this time of day is making me feel this way? Is it because I did not prepare ahead of time? Is it because the recipe I've, I've chosen is too complicated, has too many ingredients and steps? Could it be because I'm too slow in the kitchen? Or is it because there's too much chaos around this time every single day? Even as a nutritionist and a health nut myself, I don't think it is necessary to overcomplicate food, especially the weekly meals. I enjoy cooking, but but you will not find me during the week cooking elaborate meals with more than 10 ingredients max. And I'm also not afraid of repeating meals and eating the same food the next day, with the exception of salads, of course. Whatever I have to do to streamline this process for myself, make life easy for myself, I do it. So yep, today we're having the same rice with chicken like yesterday. Yes, we're having soup again. Remember, you are not only their mom, you're also their leader. And it is important to assert yourself with confidence consistently. This way they are learning that they can trust you, that it is okay to wait until food is ready. And it's actually okay to wait in general. And that they're not going to die and everything is going to be fine. So I love talking with other nutritionists and dietitians who also work with moms and pick their brains on how they approach these issues. So today I'm talking with Jody Danen, who is a wife, a mom of two, a registered dietitian, and the founder of createkidsclub.com. 
where she educates parents on healthy eating and cooking skills. She's also the creator of Lunch Bites, school lunch note cards. These lunchbox notes cards feature positive notes on acts of kindness on the front with jokes and facts on the back. All cards are focused on food and nutrition. Kids love the positive fun of discovering a Lunch Bites note card in their lunchbox, backpack, or sports bag. And if you're interested to learn more about these cards and get a little discount, check out the link in the show notes below. You can use the coupon code DORIT, D-O-R-I-T, to get 10% off your purchase. Jodi is passionate about teaching children to cook at a young age and believes this is the key to forming healthy habits for life. She lives in Green Bay, Wisconsin with her family. So here's what we cover on today's episode. We talk about what's the best way to avoid making more than one meal every day that picky eaters will actually enjoy to eat. Um, What is the best age for kids to start cooking on their own? Um, Jody also gives us some advice for moms who do not enjoy cooking and we talk about why is it important to not be strict with healthy food. We cover so much more. I'm so excited for you to meet Jody. So without further ado, let's jump over to today's interview. Hi Jody, welcome to the show. Hi Dora, thank you so much for having me. So I always like to ask about behind the scenes stories. So what inspired you to start Create Kids Club? Um, Well, I guess it's been a long time in the making. Um, I am a registered dietitian and started off in different areas, but I eventually, once I had kids, ended up staying home for a little while. But then when my daughter was in preschool, I headed back to her elementary school or my children's elementary school as the food service director. And I was there for three years um, helping redo their hot lunch program. And I got to watch all kinds of kids eat lunch for days on end. And that was eye opening to me. And um, having children of my own and doing what I was doing in the kitchen with them, cooking with them, and, and then watching at school to see how different every family functions. Um, when I was ready for a change and, and left the school, that's when I started the blog. So I think um, it just was my passion of helping kids guide them towards choosing healthy choices and then um, helping parents uh, along the way too because there's so much information out there that people get so confused and that is the area that I am passionate about. So I love talking about it and helping others. So that is where the, the blog came in. Awesome. And you know what? One of the perks of this podcast for me is to actually get to be, get to talk to fellow dietitians and nutritionists and learn from them about their work with parents. So one of the challenges that parents are having with children, especially with picky eaters, is to cater to kids' particular needs and prepare more than one meal for the family, which is honestly both exhausting and unsustainable. So do you have some advice on that? Absolutely, yes. I am a big proponent of one meal only, and Mm -hmm. everybody can be saved. You can start it. Um, Small changes at first, if people are already doing that, uh, I encourage parents to get their kids involved because I think if kids have a say in what they're eating, at least a little bit, they are much more likely to give it a try. Um, I encourage parents to bring them to the store, pick out Um, get a healthy cookbook or different recipes that you'd like for them to try, but let the kids pick that out and get them involved in the chopping, the stirring, any of those things, you will see that kids are much more likely to uh, smell it, (laughs) taste it. You know, it might not be instantaneous that they're going to eat it, but it's uh, um, the process over time that pays off. So um, yes, definitely. Um, getting into a one meal family is, is certainly the way to go. And, and it is exhausting when my kids ask for different things all the time and they know I'm not going to make them something else, but we try to compromise and always have that one dish on the table that you know that they like, whether it be a roll or corn, corn is always popular in my house. Mm -hmm. So always trying to have that one little thing that you know that they'll eat anyways is, is my advice. 
Thank you. Uh, on your website, I see that you advocate for getting children into the cooking scene, and I totally agree with you. So let's talk a little bit about that. When is a good age for children to start to cook? Which foods do you recommend to start with? And most importantly, I am interested to know how to stay cool as a mom <laughs> or as a parent <laughs> while your kitchen is being destroyed in the process. <laughs> yes, that, you know, is, is a challenge, especially for you know, certain personalities and stuff. I have lots of friends who are, look at me like, you are crazy, but it, it can be done. I would recommend getting started on a day that you are not busy. There's lots of time. Um, you don't have to be getting somewhere or you don't have people coming over where you need a clean kitchen so that um, mom is relaxed and that can be passed down to the kids. But I recommend getting them started in the kitchen as soon as you possibly can. I mean, a toddler can sit on the counter and help you break apart you know, bread or stir pasta or, you know, they're just going to be getting their hands dirty. And yeah, they're going to be in the way at that age, but trying to find something that's simple for them to do um, and in getting them involved, you'll find that they'll taste things a little bit more and smell them and kind of play with them. That's what they do at really young ages. As they get a little bit older, maybe even at the two to or three to four, even a two-year-old could probably use it. There's these really, really great kid-friendly knives. I've seen them in the grocery store now. Some of them, even like a lettuce knife, I think some are sold at. But these are like the Curious Chef knives. Um, they're really dull, but they, they do actually chop. So I always had my kids up on the counter cutting vegetables with those um, kid-friendly knives, fruit. Then, you know, more goes into their mouth and into the bowl, and I was always thrilled to see that. Uh, simple things that they can make. Um, kids really like parfaits. It's super easy cutting up any kind of fruit that you want, topping it with um, or yogurt, adding some granola, dry fruit, anything that you have around the house. They can kind of experiment and, and stack it up themselves. I always give kids some kind of special container for them to put in. If it looks a little more exciting, they're usually a little more excited about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I believe the littlest of all kids can get in the kitchen and I encourage everybody to start at, at any age, but really um, continuing that on uh, as they get older. They, they love spending the time with you and it's a perfect way to do it because they're learning and they're exploring and they're spending time with you. Yeah, I love that advice and I can tell you I have three kids on my own and one of them is super ultra picky <laughs> and it's, it's always... Um, it, it's always helpful when she is a part of the process, even though uh, she's not always willing to try. But just the fact that she was part of the of, you know, of creating of the dish and the you know the stirring, the cutting, it just makes her much more just happier, you know. And it it, it changes the atmosphere of eating for all of us because there. I know that there are a lot of those kids who are very picky and they're they have this control and, and, and resentment towards food. And I think one of the ways to help them process that, because at the end of the day, it's probably some kind of an emotion that is hard for them to, to get through. Um, it's sort of like, um, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's, um, it's one of our best tools as moms to help our children to, um, to have and, and to develop positive, a positive relationship with food. Absolutely, for sure. I have a, a daughter who is not exactly the most adventurous eater, and this is my technique to get her through it. Um, and you are so right. She'll, she'll, she's started setting the table now and making things fancy. Even though she may not eat that food the same as your daughter, she's excited to give it to the rest of us. And you know, over time, she's, she's coming around a little bit more. But I agree. I do agree with you on that and it, it does make things easier and it is a long-term game it's not a quick fix yeah. but over time I think uh, families will see the results and happier children like you said which makes it mom happier too uh, yeah uh-huh uh, 100 so even though I come from the world of food like yourself I confess that I don't enjoy spending too much time in the kitchen and I really appreciate that your recipes are simple easy and quick um, so in my practice, I see many moms who want to bring health into their homes, but you know, I see them starting with elaborate and gourmet meals. And when their meals don't look like in the book or online, they they give up and go back to processed foods. So I was wondering if you could talk to moms who don't enjoy cooking or maybe didn't learn to cook 
early enough and where is a good place to start? Oh, absolutely. That is, that is, um, I hear you on that. I love cooking, but I do not love cooking um, lengthy recipes with 10,000 ingredients. I've always been turned off by that. And maybe on a Saturday if I have a lot of time, but um, I can totally understand with the Pinterest fails. I mean, it's very hard to make food look as pretty as it does in those pictures. And being somebody who takes those pictures, there's a lot of tricks that go behind those. So nobody should feel bad that they don't look the same. Um, I highly recommend, you know, looking through recipes that have few ingredients, 10 ingredients or less, um, especially, you know, sometimes spices can take up things. So that's where most of my recipes sometimes will go over. So if they are looking for short, easy, healthy recipes, I, I would highly recommend checking out Create Kids Club because that is what I'm all about. Um, and one of my biggest time savers that I love using is the crock pot. And I know a lot of people don't enjoy that because they've had a history of uh, recipe fails using that and I certainly have too but it's learning the tricks and tips and sorts of recipes that go in there um, to make them uh, successful so I do have a lot of easy crock pot recipes that can be put together while your kids are eating breakfast to have dinner ready when you get home so those are my favorite meals and I don't like eating boring food so I try to make um, more interesting things but that kids like because I need both of my kids to eat the same meal and my husband is actually quite picky so I kind of have three of them that I'm working with so <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point and actually ties beautifully with my next question because I saw on your website that you're being transparent about your husband's love for pizza can you so can you talk about keeping it real and not and how not to be too strict with food oh absolutely my goodness we are certainly a family that follows moderation um in eating, um, my kids, it's Halloween time, we have candy all over the house. And it's, you know, just working with them on, on how, uh, you know, how to incorporate that responsibly that, you know, every food fits in a certain way. So yeah, my house, I mean, we have pizza pretty much once a week. That's my husband's favorite food. That's what we do. But it, I feel as though it's my job then since it's my passion to feed my kids healthy the other other meals of the week you know trying to do my best to um, offset those things so that it, it's not a big deal when when Sunday night rolls around and we're gonna be either making pizza or picking it up from the store you know um, trying to work on having everything work together and that it's not a big deal and maybe we'll have a salad to go along with the pizza or some fruit, you know, trying to show them that everything fits. And, um, and it certainly does. I don't believe that there's any foods that we shouldn't be eating. It's just watching what else we are eating around those foods to make it a, a long lasting, sustainable process, I guess. Right. You know what? I have to ask you this question. I am very, I'm, I'm also, I love pizza myself. My family also enjoys pizza. And then what happens is, you know, I, because I'm, you know, a health nut, <laughs> I, always, I always try to upgrade the pizza because I'm trying to, to, you know, to put more goodies into it. I don't like to hide this stuff, but, you know, I like to sort of upgrade it. And so, for example, when we're making pizza, of course, it's going to have the cheese and the olives and all of that. And I would put like peppers and all colors. And I would um, sometimes I even experiment with tuna. Even. Okay. And, and so what happens is there's always going to be someone and hint, hint, that's one of them we spoke about <laughs> on the show. Um, she would always, you know, pick those foods out and only eat the cheese and the crust. Mm -hmm. So how do I handle that? Yeah, I, I just want to like, I mean, like, I know that, you know, all about being cool and all that stuff, but is there a way of serving the foods for her not to pick the food out? I think your easiest method with that is getting her involved. Even if you ask, hey, it's, it's pizza night. What out of these three things, which one would you like to see on your pizza? Or would you like to put, I don't know if you're making it or ordering it, um, but trying to get her to, to choose out of the things you want 
you have to choose or even a list we have you know pick two things that you're going to have on your pizza this week or or bring her to the store and let her choose out of different things it's just trying to get them to do it instead of you telling them i think helps mm, that's a great point jordy <laughs> jordy <laughs> Putting it yeah. to her instead of you. I think if you can figure the way to do that, that I believe should help. Where did you learn how to cook? Well, I grew like, on my own, but my mother always made homemade meals. So, and it was not necessarily things that I loved, um, but she was a stay-at-home mom, and every um, she cooked dinner every single night when we traveled. She packed a lunch. That was just the way I was raised. But she never had us cook with her. She, we were never ever involved. But I watched her. So I think that too is where I try to tell parents, and, and everybody knows their kids are watching them. But what you pick up over time is what they will be doing as adults. So even though she didn't take me by the hand and show me how to cook. I, from watching her, I, I, at least that value of homemade healthy meals is what um, still sits in my head and what I want to pass on to my kids. But I do want to take it a step further and teach them how to cook. And um, my son is 11 now. And I started getting him in the kitchen at one, one and a half, you know, the simple playing things. And now my, he can cook full meals and he, and he loves cooking. So that makes me super happy. Um, my daughter is the pickier one and she's a little more challenging, but now she'll ask me, you know, she might be asking me to make brownies and stuff, which we'll totally do, but we'll do those healthy foods too. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So on your blog, you have the one more meal challenge. Can you talk about that? Sure. Yeah. So that was my, um, a little challenge to my followers or whomever is out there to to take one more meal a day or not a day actually in a week um, just trying to add one more homemade meal into their their um, meal planning or you know their their habits so if somebody is making dinners once a week from home maybe they're going to do it twice a week from home or if a dinner doesn't work maybe add in a breakfast or lunch um, just trying to encourage people to cook at home a little bit more frequently um, and offering the tips and tools and and recipes to make it easier for people to do that mm, i love that and i also love your project lunch bites can you share the story behind it and how can parents use them to encourage healthy eating? Yes, absolutely. So Lunch Bites are lunchbox note cards for kids and they are truly my passion project. Um, it started when my kids were very young, um, heading off to school like many of, uh, of the kids and, and having lunch lunches and they saw all their other friends around them who had, you know, maybe Twinkies and cookies and chips and all different stuff in their lunchbox every day. And while I'm totally fine with moderation, that's just not something that I regularly put into my children's lunchboxes. So I was trying to figure out what I could do to have them smile and be happy in a different way. And I started writing them little notes. And actually, I have to admit, I did add in a Hershey kiss. It was the first week <laughs> of school. And they, were, they got one Hershey kiss and they got the note. Um, the Hershey kisses ran out and I never heard anything about it. I didn't buy any more. Um, but when I stopped doing the notes, they came home and said, mom, where, why, where are the notes? We love those. We tell the jokes to our friends. And um, so then I got to thinking, hey, you know what? This will be really fun to um, offer other kids. And what else could I do with it? Adding in fun jokes related to food and tiny little nutrition facts or facts about their bodies. So um, that's where Lunch Bites came to be. Um, developing little note cards on one side has like fun facts or love notes, acts of kindness to encourage kids to do certain like fun things throughout the day. And on the back is jokes and um, facts about food and different things like that that make them laugh and smile and you know, the kids that sit around, my kids love it. So they always complain if I accidentally pack a, a repeat. So <laughs> they're, they don't like the repeats, but I do pass the, the note cards uh, down to each of the kids and then hand them off because they're, they're pretty sturdy. So they can go through quite a few lunches. So that is where they came from. And now they're available to the public. So it's super exciting to me to see this from the beginning to the end and and see kids laughing and learning and being happy about um you know non 
treat items in their lunch boxes or backpacks and that sort of thing. Yeah, I love that because, you know, I also, now that my kids know what to, how to read, I actually see them wanting to interact with me, in, you know, through their lunch. So, which is a, it's a great idea, I think. Um, I would love to try these myself. Um, and I think, I guess one of the questions for me was how do you, do they come back usually? Or is it just for, the, for a one-time use? Yeah, no, my work? kids, yeah, they're absolutely reusable. I mean, again, they kind of lose their luster after the kid has read them once, but they certainly can go through multiple kids. My kids just would always, I never even asked them to bring them home. They just always kept them in their lunchbox and brought it back home. And, and then I would recycle them to the next child. So yeah, they are, they are re reusable. Awesome. And just, uh, just to let the listeners know that uh, Jody is offering 10% off for anybody who's using the coupon code Dorit, D-O-R-I-T. So if you go to to uh, Jody's website, it's create kids createkidsclub.com. And then you look for the um, lunch bites. Uh, you, you, is it uh, through shop? Yeah, I think it's shop yes. and then the lunch bites. Yeah. And then if you purchase it on the website, you can use the coupon code Dorit to get a little discount. Thank you for that. All right, Jody. So I have four questions that I ask all my guests. And the first one is, this show is all about inspiring mothers to thrive as women and mothers. And I like to call it being a goddess in your life. So I'm curious to know, how are you being a goddess in your own life? How do you take care of yourself, your soul, your body? What are some of your non-negotiables? Gosh, you know, I... Um... I need to be active and get outside. And I wasn't always like that when I was younger, but at about 35, I took up running and it was the best thing I've ever done for my inner self, and my <laughs> outlook on life. And um, I have to admit, I don't enjoy it while I'm doing it. But when I get home, I feel much more focused and calm. I'm a better mom, mm. um, all of those things. So um, that is how I um, remain sane. However, it's a daily struggle every day to choose to do that. But it always, I know when I get back home, I will feel great. But also I've been watching my children start doing some of that thing, those habits, which makes me thrilled. My daughter joined uh, Girls on the Run. It's a program that we have through their school. And I think it's a nationwide, at least in the U.S. program, but encouraging girls to get out and be active and that sort of thing. So that is what, um, in my family, I think the, that's been the most beneficial thing that I've done lately. I love that. What advice does your now mommy self would have given to your pre-mommy self? Ooh. <laughs> Things <laughs> don't always go as planned and to <laughs> just go with it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. You can plan it all you want, but the kids really ultimately will be the ones to, to guide you. Yeah. So I like to keep it real and show listeners that even though someone is an expert in one area, they might be struggling with other things. So what are some of your current challenges as a woman, wife, or mother? Organization. Mm -hmm. I am not the most organized person. I try, but um, that I can always work on. Uh, also, yeah, you know, the basics laundry, cleaning. My house is a little bit of a mess right now. So that kind of goes back to why I, the organization part of things. So yeah, those are, those are downfalls that I have. Okay. Any last advice for new moms? New moms, um, don't beat yourself up when you can't meet all these expectations you might set for yourself, especially in this area. We're talking about healthy meals, that sort of thing. Um, I've been a mom for a long time now. You work it out and you figure it out, but just trying your best and um, try to get a game plan. I, I recommend finding the simple meals. Don't be trying to, you know, go overboard with with uh, fancy gourmet options to, you know, show off to your husband what you can do and take care of a baby. I, I let that stuff go, but just trying your best and, and know that they grow so fast. So um, set some of the stuff aside and play with them a little bit more because in a blink of an eye, those babies aren't babies anymore. So that's, that's uh, a hard lesson, I think, uh, that I've learned how quickly the time goes. Thank you. You know, as you said, uh, not to impress your husband, I was like, forget the husband. It's the mother-in-law who I'm concerned about. 
<laughs> that, that too, that too. <laughs> okay, great. So before I let you go, how can, can you tell everybody, how can people find you online, your social, me social media handles, everything, all of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Create Kids Club. I'm also on Instagram under the same, uh, Twitter, that. I also have a Jody Danen RD Twitter. I, um, that's probably not my um, most involved area, but I am really, really active on Facebook. So I'd love for everybody to head over there and join me there. Um, you can join my email list if anybody's interested in continuing to get updated recipes and tips on feeding healthy families. Um, and if anybody wants to reach out and say hi, I'd love to hear from anybody or any questions that they might have, especially on the recipes and feeding if, uh, if there's specific questions people have that is totally an area that I love talking about that's amazing thank you so much and I'll have all the links we've discussed today on the show in the show notes below uh, and also on my website at healthbeginswithman.com forward slash podcast thank you so much for joining jo Jody. thank you so much for having me thank you for listening to the health begins with mom show I love hearing from you, so please post your comments and questions over at healthbeginswithmom.com forward slash podcast. If you love the show, please share it on social media and in your real life with other moms who might enjoy this content. And if you have a burning question or topic you'd like me to hit on the show, just drop me a line at dorit at healthbeginswithmom.com. And if you love this show and really want to support it, please go to iTunes, write a review, and subscribe. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time. Much love and many blessings.